Hello again, math friends. This is Mr. Bradley. This video, I'm going to cover multiplying mixed numbers. Now, this is probably one of the more difficult things to do when you're multiplying fractions, because so far, multiplying fractions has been relatively simple. But now, it's going to get a little bit more complex. So when you're multiplying mixed numbers, the first thing that you should do is turn both of the numbers into improper fractions. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 2 and then add the numerator. This isn't like adding where you can do the whole numbers separately. You have to do them all together as one. So I'm going to first turn them into improper fractions. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2 is 8. So this is 8 thirds times. Just bring down my multiplication symbol. And then we turn 3 and 1 fourth into uh, improper fraction by doing 3 times 4, which is 12, and then 12 plus 1 is 13. Now, you can once you have them written as improper fractions, you can look at that simply as a multiplication problem of two regular fractions. And this is really where you want to look diagonally to see, is there anything I can reduce? Can I reduce 3 and 13 by anything? Do they have any common factors? 3 and 13 actually don't have any common factors. You'd think they might, but they don't. So then I'll look at 8 and 4 and say, okay, do these two things have any common factors? And they do. They, I can divide both 8 and 4 by 4. So I'm going to cross off 4 and 8, and I'll divide both by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. And then I'll just take my 2 times 13, and then I'll do 3 times 1. And that will be my answer for now. So 2 times 13 is 26. If you don't know, you have to do that math all to the side. And 3 times 1 is 3. Now this is an improper fraction. Now you have to turn it back into a mixed number. So 26 divided by 3 uh, is goes in 8. That's 24. When you subtract, I get 2. So that's 2 thirds. So that's 8 and two-thirds. That's the final answer there. So that is basically how you multiply mixed numbers. It's a two-step process for, well, it's a few-step process, really. One, turn them into improper fractions. So I'll write turn into improper. That's the first thing you do. And then step two is reduce, if you can. You can't always reduce, but oftentimes you'll find that you can at least do one number. So we have one, turn them into improper fractions. Two, reduce if you can. Three, multiply. And then four, we'll say simplify. So by simplify in this case, I mean turn any improper fractions, um, whoops, like this, into mixed numbers like this. So my board's a little crazy right now. You can pause it if you want to get some of this down. We're, I'm going to take you through um, two other examples of this. Oh, three other examples. But one quick way to check yourself is to estimate. So let me show you how to do that. My answer, I'm going to erase all this so you can see clearly. I said my answer was 8 and 2 thirds. Just erase everything around that. And my answer was 8 and 2 thirds. I can estimate, my estimate should be somewhat close to that. So here's how you do that. You take your 2 and 2 thirds, you round it to the nearest whole number. Is 2 and 2 thirds closer to 2 or 3? And it's closer to 3, so I'll round that to about 3 times 3 and 1 fourth. Is that closer to 3 or closer to 4? It's about 3. It's closer to 3. So the answer should be something around 9, and you can see that my answer was 8 and 2 thirds. So I estimated, and it was close to my answer, so I must have done something right. So here's another example. And actually, this time, I'm going to estimate first. So if I round 1 and 1 fourth to 1, 
times uh, 2 and 3 fourths is about 3. My answer should be about 1 times 3. It should be like 1-ish. I mean 3-ish, I'm sorry. So I'll just put that kind of off to the side and say, okay, my answer should be something around 3. And now I'll actually do the work. So I'm going to start by, again, 1, changing them over to improper fractions. So 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, so that's 5 fourths, times 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So I get 5 fourths times 11 fourths. So remember, first, I I'll write it again. First, change to improper. I did that. Second, reduce if I can. And so I'm looking at 5 and 4. I can't reduce 5 and 4. And I'm looking at 4 and 11. And I can't reduce that either. So that brings me to step 3. Multiply. So multiply straight across. Can't reduce. So 5 times 11 is 55. And 4 times 4 is 16. And then now that I have an improper fraction, I want to simplify it into a mixed number. Simplify. So let me do that now. I'm going to do 55 divided by 16. This is a little bit tougher, so you might need to take a guess. Uh, two 16s would be 30, uh, 32, and then so it's higher than that. Four 16s, maybe you come off to the side. 4 16, 6 times 4 is 24, so here are my 2, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, so that's too big, so 4 is too big, I guess it has to be 3, so I'll do a 3, 3 times 6 is 18, and then 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, so I have 55 minus 48, which is 7. So there's my remainder. So it's 3 and 7 sixteenths. So that last part might be a little tougher depending on what the denominator is. And that's why you really want to reduce if you can. I couldn't reduce though. There's nothing that, if you look diagonally in this problem, I couldn't reduce. So the answer is 3 and 7 sixteenths. And I'll double check by looking back at my estimate, which was 3. And it's pretty close, so I must be right. So here I'll take you through another one. And for this one, I want you to try to do this on your own. So by pausing the video in a second. So remember, first you're going to change to improper. Then you're going to two, reduce if you can. And then three, you're going to multiply. Oh, that's too many parts of the my M. I don't like it. I want to rewrite. Three, you're going to multiply, and then four, simplify. So go ahead and pause the video, write it down, and see if you can work out the problem, and then you can unpause the video, and then watch me do it and see if, if you did it in the right order. Okay, and if you get stuck, you can unpause it too. So go ahead, give it a shot. unpause it, here's what you should have done. You should have done 5 times 10, because I'm changing it to improper. So 5 times 10 is 50, plus 4 is 54. That's a big number. I hope I can reduce this later. And then 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5, so that's 5 uh, thirds. And now I'm going to multiply. But before I multiply, I'm going to see if I can reduce. So first I'll look at the two fives. And that's that's a gift. Five and five is a gift. So I will reduce that. That is both down to one. Five goes into both of those once. Fifty-four and three, you might not be sure if that's reducible, but if you remember your divisibility rules, if you add the digits of a number, for example, five plus four, that's nine. If you get a number that's reducible by or divisible by three, then the fifty-four itself is divisible by three. So Knowing that, I would know that, hey, I can reduce both of these by 3. 
3 divided by 3 is 1. And 54 divided by 3, I don't know offhand, so I'm going to go 54 divided by 3. Goes into 5 once. Now that's a 3. Subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2. Bring down my 4. And then 3 goes into 24 8 times. That's 24. And so it goes in 18 times. Now, I'm just going to do 18 times 1 over 1 times 1. That's multiplying, which is 18 over 1. And then I'm going to simplify it as my last step, 18. So 10 and 4 fifths times 1 and 2 thirds is 18 whole. That's interesting. And that's why reducing ahead of time can really help. That You won't have to deal with these numbers like 54 and then try to reduce later with even bigger numbers. The last example that I'll show you here is about Milton and his little brother. They were having a competition to see who could throw a football farther. Milton threw the ball two and two thirds time and his little bro two and two thirds feet and his little brother shocked everyone and he threw the ball two and a half times farther. So this is similar to a problem that we did before, but now instead of giving you the different distances, I told you that his brother threw the ball two and a half times farther. So how far did his little brother throw the ball? So <clears throat> in this case, I'm taking 20 and 2 thirds, and I need to go 2 and a half times further. So I'm going to do times 2 and a half. And this is the problem that you're dealing with. And that'll tell you how far that Milton's brother threw the ball. Now go ahead again, and you can pause it and try this yourself. Remember, turning it into improper fraction first, so 20 times 3 plus 2, and then 2 times 2 plus 1. You can pause it and try this on your own. So 20 times 3 is 60, 60 plus 2 is 62, so 62 thirds times 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And I have 5 halves. Now, 3 and 5 can't be reduced, but 2 and 62 are both even numbers, so I'm going to cut those in half. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 62 divided by 2, that's easy, that's 31. And now I'm just going to multiply straight across. 31 times 5, now I don't know what that is offhand, so I'm going to do it off to the side. 31 times 5 is 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 3 is 15, so that's 115, 155, sorry over 3 times 1, which is 3. Now I have to turn it back into a mixed number. So I'm going to do 155 divided by 3. 3 goes into 15 5 times. That's 15. You get nothing as your remainder. Bring down your 5, and 3 goes into 5 once. That's 3, and you subtract, and you get 2. So it would be 51 and 2 thirds. So 155 thirds is 51 and 2 thirds. Now, I'll write it down here, 51 and 2 thirds, because the answer is, I believe, in feet. How far did Milton Brother throw the ball? He threw it 51 and 2 thirds feet. So that is multiplying. This is multiplying mixed numbers in a nutshell. You just have to remember the four basic steps. One, you want to turn them into improper fractions. Two, reduce if you can. So on a lot of these, we could I'll put it in parentheses. Oops, if you can. Three, you want to multiply straight across. And then four, turn it back into a mixed number. And you might also have to reduce in the end if you missed any of the reducing 
in step two. Sometimes some people miss or, or reduce that they could do. So keep these steps in mind and you'll be on your way to multiplying mixed numbers. So good luck and I'll see you in class.